Big round of applause, amen. So good to have you here this morning. Those of you that's going to be listening by means of social media, good to have you with us. I want you to turn with me this morning to Mark chapter 8, verses 36 and 37. Then I'm going to read an article that was written by a man called Stephen Strain. And when you hear the article, you probably think that I wrote it myself. It's very similar to what I have written many times. And uh, I wanted his perspective on it, so I thought I'd read it today. But the scripture says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? And what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Some receive very little in exchange for their soul. Hell is going to be full of people that didn't receive very much for their soul. You know, Jesus was sold out for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. Some have sold him out for a lot less. It's not hard to live for God. Yes, there will be tribulations, persecutions, and situations you'll go through. But it's not hard to live for God. The Bible says the way of the transgressor or the sinner is hard. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, the more we know about the word of God, the more success we have in this world. As far as spiritual success. We realize that God is for us and not against us and as we just sung if God be for us who can be against us it really doesn't matter Amen. because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world Amen. so anything that comes your way and there is no temptation taking you but such is common to man but with every temptation God will make a way for you to escape Amen. so he was tempted and tried at all points even as you are there's nothing new under the sun so you'll face situations, trials, and tribulations. This last election, we thought, you know, well, some thought, I didn't think. People ask me about it and say, well, we're going to have a red wave. We're going to win the Senate, and it's going to be an overwhelming win, and we're going to win Congress, and we're going to take back Washington. Oh, I just yeah. say, yeah, I hope so. Because I knew it wasn't so. I knew that America's time for judgment is now. Amen. We have slaughtered over 60 million innocent children. We have done things that are unmentionable. If we only knew what the government has done to us in the past three years, our hair would curl. Mm -hmm. I want to read this to you. It says, it's no secret we live in an upside down world where evil is now called good and good is called evil. While many of us believe God raised up America as a shining city on a hill, let's face it, the United States is more and more evil and deserves to be judged. Mm -hmm. History is full of difficult times for believers. Indeed, many millions of Christians are being persecuted in our generation. But Christians in America live in what often seems like a bubble because of our constitutional rights. We have freedoms not enjoyed in other countries, yet we now live in a post-Christian culture. There have been terrible times before, but it seems as though God always came through in answer to prayer. Amen. Fifty years ago in the hippie era, the Jesus moment, movement which impacted me brought millions of rebellious young people to faith in Christ. When America seemed at its low ebb during the Jimmy Carter administration, something seemed to shift when hundreds of thousands of Christians humbled themselves and prayed and repented for America sins at Washington for Jesus in 1980, which me and my wife did attend. We were there. The church sent us there. We voted in Ronald Reagan. Things took a turn publicly and financially, and the Berlin Wall came down. 
but did anything really change? In recent years, many Christians, including me, felt if we could only vote in leaders who shared our views, values, and situations would improve. Instead, we've had setback after setback. When things got so bad on so many levels, inflation, crime, uh, transgenderism, taught in schools, and socialism, policies, uh, that it seemed change was inevitable. Many of us had high hopes for a midterm election. A number of conservative politicians, many of them Christians leaders, seemed poised to win. Some political pundits and even Christian prophets said there would be a red wave meaning large numbers of conservatives would be elected and implemented policies more in line with a biblical worldview. When the red wave didn't happen, millions of Christians who believed God would come through and the tide would turn were certainly saying, suddenly saying, God, where are you? As if we, or as if he were somewhere asleep. Right before the election, Barry McGuire, author of the issue, cover story, wrote an outstanding editorial, Charisma News, and suggested that perhaps our will to have America become godly is not God's will, because it would be out of step with his judgment of America and in time prophecies. The election of God honoring candidates with a biblical viewpoint in the midterms would have interfered with his trajectory for America. America has earned God's judgment a thousand times over, and we now and we know America isn't even mentioned in the last day prophecies. McGuire writes, in two short years, America has lost the world's respect and our nation's confidence. The idea of turning our allegiance to a global leader, the Antichrist, is now a uh, fact, amen, that is going to happen soon. It's going to happen, and we deserve it to happen. God is no longer going to allow anything to slow down our race to judgment. McGuire reminds us God gives us rules to, uh, and we deserve not necessarily the one we want. Sadly, in every obscene category, America is by far the major purveyor of wickedness worldwide. He continues, if you love God and still live in this world, and the things of this world, these elections are your worst nightmare. But if you love God with the eyes fixed on the world to come, the darker it gets, the closer you are to the rapture and the actual seeing Him face to face. For those who believe we are nearing the end of time, McGuire says there's no question we're getting really close. When these things begin to happen, look up and lift your eyes up, lift your head up, for your redemption, draw nigh, Luke 21, 28. Amen. When Paul describes the rapture of the church, he says, therefore encourage one another with these words, and said, 1 Thessalonians 4, 18. So let's be encouraged. As McGuire uh, says, rather than allowing the events of these days to drag you down and discourage you, use them as a launching pad to move everyone every day closer to Jesus before it's too late and they're left behind. The spiritual and eternal, not the political or culture, must take priority in the lives of all believers. We have a mission to spread the gospel, and Mary McGuire is an example for us all. I could have wrote that, been writing that. We are living in a time of the end, a time when judgment is beginning to fall upon America as well as the rest of the world. A time when any moment we could have things change. Things change overnight, folks. It doesn't take years now. It takes moments to see changes in policies and, and different things that's going to affect you as a man and woman of God. It's going to affect your family. It's going to affect your friends. It's going to affect everyone because changes take place and God is getting ready to do great judgment upon this world and America is included in that judgment. And I agree, America is not mentioned in the last days. It's not a superpower. It's not a world power. It, it's not even mentioned. So something drastic has to happen to America and the American people for this not to even be mentioned in the book of Revelations. In 1 Peter, we read in the fourth chapter, 7, 17, 18, and 19, it says, But the end of all things is at hand. Be sober. 
and watch unto prayer. <clears throat> Be sober and watch unto prayer. You know, you look around today and you see the churches, and I've been to several of them. I've been to our sister churches in different places, and it seems like the church is not really growing. And, and by growth, I mean people being born again, actually being saved, born again Christians, actually not loving the world, but loving God. Amen? Amen. I'm talking about loving God, not the world, because if the love of the world is in you, then the love of God is not in you. So you have to really love God with all your soul, mind, heart, everything that you have has to belong to God, not you. You have to be willing to suffer persecution, tribulation, trials, and whatever the situation may come. You've got to hold on to your faith. Amen. And the Bible tells us to continue in faith. Amen. You don't lose heart. You don't stop believing. You continue in faith. You continue believing God. Continue to walk, amen, even though the devil may, as a roaring lion, walk about seeking whom he may devour. Don't let him get his teeth sunk into you. Amen. If you're weak, unstable, because an unstable man can't expect to receive anything from God. So you're away from God, not with God. You're double-minded. You're one way and then another way. We see that all the time. We don't need that in the church. No. Amen? Amen. One day you're in church, you're crying, weeping, and, and crying out to God, oh, God, save me, and everything else. And the next time you're at the bars and everything else, that's not godly. And we got preachers don't preach anything anymore that, that you know, because they don't want to affect anybody in the church. They don't want to drive anybody away. You know, let's just put up a sin in the church and let's invite Hollywood in and let's have the uh, smoke machines and, and all this other stuff that looks like Hollywood, the flashing lights, uh, everything else, and make the preacher look like some great man. You know, I'm not wanting to look great. Amen. I want Jesus to be seen in me. Amen. 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 I don't care if you never know my name. Just know the name that's above every name, and that name is Jesus Christ. The yeah. Son of God. Lord. Where God says, For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Where's judgment begin? At the house of God. God must first judge the church before He ever ju judges anything else. Because the church has a responsibility to preach the Word of God. Amen. In Mark you'll find that it says, Go ye into all the world, last chapter, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. You know, we try to uh, bring in something different into the Word of God. But the Bible says don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing from it, because if you do, your name's going to be taken out of the book of life. So you can be saved and then lost. Your name can be in the book of life and then be taken out of the book of life. You go in the Bible, and I, I've preached on it before, but your name can be blotted out. And God said He'll blot it out. See, God wants you to be consistent in your walk with Him. God wants you to be somewhat a man that always has their eyes on the world. You come to church and all you're looking at is the world, or all you're doing is fiddling with your phones and everything else, and you don't hear what the Word of God says, and you're, you're unfaithful to God. You, you, you're just in a place where you think, you know, well, I'm going to heaven just because I went to church. <laughs> no, folks, you're not going to heaven just because you went to church. You can be a preacher and still go to hell. You can be a deacon and still go to hell. You can be a Miracle Temple member and still go to hell. Doesn't make no difference if you leave the choir, you can still go to hell. But the only way you can go to heaven is by being born again. Amen. By having your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Can someone say amen? Amen. So it begins first at the house of God. Then it goes on to say, And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? See, most of you had enough word preached to you that you ought to be good, stable, committed Christians. If you're still out there doing things that you know you shouldn't be doing, shame on you. Amen? Amen. Some of you might say, well, I'm not convicted by it. Let me tell you something. Conviction wears off and wears thin. If you continue to do something that God is, is convicting you of, 
then sooner or later, you that conviction wears off, your heart begins to be hard, and when your heart gets hard, you no longer hear from God. You'll read in the Word of God, if you have ears to hear, let them hear what thus saith the Lord God, but then in the book of Revelation, it says if you have an ear to hear, singular, amen, because most folks have gone partially deaf, and they're not hearing from God any longer. You need to hear from God. Every decision amen. you make, everything you do, needs to be biblical based uh, on the Word of God. Yeah. You know what's right and wrong. Yeah. Amen. The heathen knows what's right and wrong most of the time. Uh, but you just continue doing what you want to do and then you're going to have to face judgment. Yeah. Because God will judge you. Right here it says He'll judge the house of God first. Yeah. The 18th verse says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wow. Wow. Righteous folks are scarcely going to be saved. Where's the ungodly and the sinner going to appear? What's that mean? That means you've got to live for God. That means you've got to be ready for the rapture. You've got to be someone that's faithful, someone who's a leader, someone who's leading their family to Christ. You can't be a good example if you don't show up on time. You can't be a good example if you don't show up at all. You can't be a good example if you don't live uh, the life you know to live outside the church walls. Uh, amen. Don't just live it on Sunday and then live it on Wednesday. Live it every single day of your life. Because God will convict you. Yes. And continue to, continue to convict you until you've just got your heart so hard you don't hear it no more. Uh-huh. Wherefore let us, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. I see people on Facebook in different places. Folks, I want to assure you today there's a difference between prosecution and persecution. Amen. Amen. Some people are prosecuted for their crimes and prosecuted for the judgment, uh, amen, they're receiving. It's a prosecution uh, because they knew to do right and did wrong. So, you know, if persecution is something when you did nothing wrong and still people come against you, I face that. Amen. I face it with friends and family, even church members and brothers and sisters that are close friends. They don't like the way I preach. They don't like the fact that I can, I can take the Word of God and today's headlines and put them together and make you see, uh, amen, that what time we're living in. But I assure you uh, that Jesus Christ wants you to know uh, what time it is. Uh, because He said He's coming uh, in an hour, you think not. He's coming, amen, as a thief amen. in the night. And those who are not expecting uh, His coming, amen, will lose out in going to heaven in the rapture. And then you say, well, I'm going to be saved anyway. No, you're not. The Bible said he calls us all small and great, rich and poor, free or bond. All. Well, I'm not taking the mark. Yeah, that's amazing to me. Come on. I'm not taking the mark. You can't give your heart to God right now. You can't show up twice a week, some people, yeah, yeah. amen, for two hours a week to give service to God, but you're going to give your life to Jesus. Come on, get real. Get real. Amen. When the road hits the blacktop, amen, our tires hit the blacktop, uh, that's when you really know what's going on. Mm. Amen. When you really face persecution, if they come in and say, you know what, if you don't accept the mark of the beast, I'm going to kill every one of your kids. A uh, different story than ain't. Mm -hmm. You know what, if you don't take the mark of the beast, we're going to fillet you. Oh, different story, isn't it? But see, none of you probably have read the Fox's Book of Martyrs. You've never read about how our former brothers and sisters were slaughtered, amen. Some skinned alive, some filleted, some sawn under, some uh, crucified upside down, some crucified right side up, uh, some lost their heads uh, because they knew that Christ was real. Uh, they knew that they had 
Amen. A determination to see amen. Jesus Christ again. And those folks, amen, that declared in the early church uh, that Christ was real. Uh, you think if they thought uh, that the resurrection didn't take place, uh, they'd actually suffer such a great, horrible death uh, for nothing. No, my friend, they knew uh, that Christ was resurrected uh, and they wanted to know Jesus in the resurrection of his power and be conformable unto his death. They wanted to know Christ in the suffering, amen, that he bore upon the cross of Calvary. I assure you this morning, we need to realize that Jesus is coming and is coming very amen. soon. Amen. I look at what is going on in different parts of the country. Illinois, California, New York, Washington, these states that are doing things to disarm their citizens. And folks, let me assure you, they don't disarm you because they're concerned about some innocent life getting shot by you. In Park Forest, I read this morning, just had a man sleeping in a stone Kia with two uh, guns that were illegally owned. Amen? In a stolen vehicle. Now, I assure you, a criminal is not going to turn in his guns. But they will rob your house. They will rape your women. Come on. They will take everything you have because the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. You know who their, fa their father is? The devil. And they will follow what the devil tells them to do. Yeah. I've never seen such maniacs in all my life. And people just keep following the same old, same old without anything, amen, concerning God to make a difference in their life. They're just like sheep that are blind. They've gone astray. And if you're led by the blind, then both of you are going to fall in the ditch. That's right. I want to preach the truth to you. Amen. I want you to know the truth. Amen. Amen. So the Bible tells us you, you suffer, amen, righteously, amen, then you're suffering persecution. But if you're, you know, caught like that young man was caught in a car with two guns, amen, and a stolen vehicle, and then you think, oh man, I'm being persecuted. No, you're not. You're getting what the law says you deserve. Amen. Yeah. amen? Yep. So it goes on to say, we're for let them that suffer. Now it tells us we're going to suffer. Let them that suffer according to the will of God. So in the will of God, you mean you can suffer? Oh yeah, you can. You can suffer even if you're in the will of God. It says, let them commit the keeping of their souls to Him and well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. Don't stop doing good. Keep on keeping on. Amen. Do what you can to change the people around you, to change the world that you live in. Do what you can to let people know, amen, you're a child of the living God and you're not going to give up your identity as a child of God to fit in with some world. Come on, man. Some of just, you know, well, if I, I, I love God, but I, I, you know, I, I love this too, you know. I put a thing on by a man, Raven Hill, I think his name was, and he said, you know, some of this, I'm, I'm a sinner, I'm just a saved sinner. No, you're not a saved sinner. That'd be like saying you're, you're a sober drunk. Yeah. Or you're a pure harlot. Come on. Come on. No, you know, that, that don't work. Amen? Amen. You've got to really be saved. And the Bible tells us that we ought to be ready. Ready. Watching. Praying. It says, and watch unto prayer. Amen. How much, how much do you pray today? When we calculate how much we watch TV and how much other things we do in our life and then calculate that and put it against prayer, we, we don't do much praying, do we? The Bible says how much to pray? Continually. There will always be a prayer in your heart. No, you don't have to get down on your knees and, and, and cry out to God and pray there's a time for that. But you can pray throughout the day. 
And I guarantee you, the more you talk to God, the more God will talk to you. Yeah. That's what I said about yeah. preachers always listening to Fox News and everything else and then saying what they say. Going to be a great red wave. No, they're not. I knew there wasn't. Amen. This thing, the only one that can turn this around would be God Himself. And I don't believe God is going to turn it around. I believe these are the last days and that the world is ready for judgment. Ready for the wrath of God to be poured out upon him. Amen. Upon him. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 3. It says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, Here I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in. Amen. But you had to hear his voice. Amen. You know, you can't be like they were in the beginning, Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 3, verse 10. It says, I heard you and was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. There's a whole lot of naked folks out there that's hiding from the voice of God. That's hiding from the presence of God. When you come to church, amen, and all you do is sit here in church and, and I preach you a message and you never respond to anything. You're not praising God. You're not, you're not you say amen. You should not say amen or owe me one of the two because if I'm hitting you, then it'll be owe me. Yeah, See, if you're a true Christian, if I'm up here and I preach hell real high, you ought to be shouting amen. Why? Because you're not going there. Hallelujah. If you're a true Christian, amen, we're not preaching on sin, you ought to be glorifying God because you've been free from sin. You're no longer in bondage to sin, amen. You no longer have to obey the lust and desires of the flesh because you've crucified it every single day. It's wonderful that God's grace begins anew every morning you awaken. John 1 14 it says the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us we have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the father full of grace Please. and truth Please. in the beginning was the word yeah. and the word was with God and the word was God but even the Word of God, Jesus Christ Himself, was tempted. The Bible said He was tempted in all points, even as we are. When He was baptized, it said the Spirit led Him into the wilderness to be tempted yeah. by the devil. Uh -huh. And He was tempted by the devil. Yeah. And the devil took the Word of God out of context and gave it to Jesus. And Jesus, being the Word of God, gave it right back to Him, but put it in context. Amen. And that's what you got to do. The devil will tell you, oh, God loves you, and God's going to take you to heaven because you went to the altar one day. It doesn't make any difference that you drank and stank. Amen. Doesn't make any difference that you live a, a hardest life. Doesn't make no difference that you're an adulterer, a fornicator, a fornicator, a liar, or a thief. You're going to heaven. No, you're not. You're going to hell. And Paul Pence, just like this one, has been preaching that for years. And others uh, remained silent. Amen. They were silent uh, when they took prayer out of school. They were silent uh, when abortion, amen, uh, took place in America. They're silent when now when they want to euthanize the older folks, uh, amen, and the handicap. Uh, and some of you better wake up. Amen. When you vote for things like this, you're voting for the devil. Yeah. Come on. Simple and true. Yeah. Oh, I was voting my union. I don't care what excuse you yeah. use. Well. You're voting for the devil. Mm -hmm. Everybody look up here. There is no Republican or Democrat or Independent when it comes to voting. There is only 
Christian. Amen. That's the only way you ought to vote. Amen. If it don't line up with biblical principles, then you are voting for the wrong yes. person. And you can research what they vote for before you ever check the box up by their name. Can someone say amen? amen. Give me somebody that's got a heart for God. Amen. I don't care if he's Democrat, Republican, Independent, or whatever. I'm going to vote for the one that's closest to the word of the living God. Can someone say amen? And don't give me this old excuse I'm going to stay home from the polls because they haven't given us much of a choice. Amen. That's a right that's been given to you by the blood of many men and women that have been shed throughout the decades. Amen. So you would have a right to make a decision on who your leaders are. Amen. Well, Brother Wall, you preach too much about politics. Get real. Get real. You ought to preach about it. Yeah. If you can't relate what is happening now to the Word of God, shame on you. Yeah. Well, I, I seen this on Facebook. I care what you need to get your face out of that book and get your face in the real book, the Word of God. Amen. 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 Got people, Amen, who going to wore their fingerprints out. You can't even be fingerprinted. Yeah. You're going to wore them out, Amen. You're going to have arthritis, say, Amen. Yeah. Thumbs ain't going to work one day. I don't know what you're going to do. Peck it with your nose because you're so addicted, Amen, to that phone. Yeah. Now that you can't do anything else, that thing is a devil in itself, Amen. Good, amen, that you can put something on there that's good, but mostly it's perverted, crazy nonsense. Come on. Ain't nobody caring about what you ate today. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Ain't nobody care about all that stuff. We all do it. We're all guilty of it. Yeah. Amen. Because we all want somebody to think we're somebody we're not. Hello, see, you can make a profile on Facebook, you know you're lying. <laughs> amen. You go on there and you get all this stuff, amen. You, yeah. you, you doctor those pictures up and you look like you weigh 98 pounds soaking wet and you're 300 pounds. <laughs> and everybody comes over, oh, you look so good, you lost so much weight. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> so actually, it's a lie. Amen. 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 And you done colored your face. Amen. There's not a blemish or spot anywhere on it. And somebody's seen you around makeup, they <laughs> scare them half to death. Oh, but you look good, don't you? Why are you saying that, Pastor? Because the same thing happens in the church. We put on a face. We put on a persona that we're this when we're something else. Amen. It's time to get real in God. It's time to be real. It's time to say, Lord, use me. Lord, I'm tired of just sitting on the seat of do nothing. I want to get up uh, and I want to do something. I, I want your living word to be inside of me so when the devil comes in like a flood, uh, you raise up a standard against him. Uh, and all of hell cannot prevail uh, against the mighty woman and a mighty man of God. Uh, amen. Who knows the word of God and is established and rooted and grounded in God's word. Amen. Lord. You'll have an answer for everything the devil says. Amen. Jesus, amen, Matthew 4, 1 and 4 says, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. You folks that know about fasting, amen, don't tell me you fasted 40 days and 40 nights and then get hungry. Amen. If you, if you say that, talk to Julian. After one day, he said, man, it's getting hard. It's getting hard. Pastor's getting hard. Amen. Try 40 days. When your organs start to starve themselves to death, your body begins to turn on itself. Yeah, try 40 days with nothing but water. And you'll find out fasting ain't easy. I've had people come to church and tell me, say, yeah, I've been fasting, ain't been eating nothing, and, you know, ain't lost a pound. Okay. You're lying. Mm -hmm. You lose weight when you're fasting. Because mm -hmm. I used to fast a whole lot. And you lose a lot of weight when you fast. Mm -hmm. But it says, you know, that, that he was fasting. He was praying. And after he 
fasted 40 days, what happened? Huh? Oh, the devil came. And then the Bible says that after the devil tempted him, he left him for a little while. You think just because uh, you, you fast and you pray, the devil's going to leave you alone forever? He's not going to leave you alone forever. He's going to come back. He came back to oppose Jesus. He came back uh, to have Jesus crucified. He thought he was doing a great thing. But the Bible tells us after the crucifixion and the resurrection, he said, well, if I would have known this was going to be the results, I'd have never done it. See, the devil doesn't know the end results of your life. He doesn't know the end results uh, of what was going on in Christ's life. He just knows some things. Uh, but one thing he does know, and I'm going to end this uh, with this, uh, amen, he knows he has but a short time, uh, and he's going to come against you. The hounds of hell are going to dog your tracks, uh, and they're going to try to get you, uh, amen, to leave the church, uh, to leave the Lord, uh, and to live for the world. Uh, I see it all the time, uh, Christians. Christians that were, that were on fire for God now have been put out uh, by the devil. Amen. No longer living for God. Uh, every once in a while they'll show up for church, uh, shed a little crocodile tear and go right back uh, to the same things they've done before. Uh, shame on you. Uh, the Bible talks about you. Uh, you're like a dog turned to the vomit or a pig uh, turned back to the wallow. Uh, amen. Yes, Jesus was hard. Uh, he says some of you are like viper snakes. Uh, amen. And the Word of God says some, uh, hallelujah, like whitewashed tombs uh, full of dead man's bones. Uh, dead man's bones that stink uh, with an odor, uh, hallelujah. And when you live in sin, uh, you stink from sin. Amen. Uh, just ask the prodigal. Yeah. He smelled like a pig pen. Mm -hmm. He had all the enjoyments, all the provisions yeah. of the Father's house. But then, took a far journey. How far is that journey you took? Hopefully it's the right way. Because see, the Bible tells us, Julian, there is a way that seems the right to man, but the end thereof is death and destruction. You may in your mind think you're doing everything right and be totally wrong. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. No man can come unto the Father except by me. You got to go through Christ. He is the door to the sheepfold. Amen. He is the door where we come through to get to the Father. Amen. We no longer have to go to the priest. No longer have to go to a man. We can go straight to Christ. And Christ is our advocate, our lawyer with the Father. Amen. So folks, you need to realize that we're living in some troubled times, some hard times, but we're living in some good times. Because we're not going to be defeated. We are going to succeed. And God is always going to have a remnant. It might look as small as what's here today. Amen. But God's going to have a remnant. Some folks uh, come to me and say, Well, you've got a small church. we got a mega church. I don't care. Jesus had a mega church. Amen. Yeah. Many times he had a mega church. Because he's feeding them. Giving them what they want. Amen. I've had people come and say, you know, can you give me this one? Right before Christmas says, I need to buy Christmas presents. Can you give me this money? We're coming to church. See, what she forgot is she told me that about four or five months earlier. <coughs> that if I gave her money then, she was coming to church. So I gave it to her then, never seen her in church. So here we use the same thing again to try to get somebody to pay you to come to church. I'm not paying you to come to church. Amen. If you have a real need, I'm going to help you. But don't turn that into a cash station like we've had another member try to do that. You know, you're willing to help them, but don't come in the office all the time. You know, I got this thousand dollar bill here you need to pay. This one you need to pay. No, no, no. You ought to come to church and be paying the church your tithes so the church can remain open. Amen. Hello. Amen. Oh, I know you're ready for me to stop. <coughs> Let him quit, Lord. Let him quit, Lord. You know what? Amen. We need the Word of God. Yeah. When I first got saved, I was at the altar every time the man gave an altar call. See, because I knew that every day of our life, we're not going to be perfect. And all of sin comes short the glory of God. And I wanted to be right every moment, every hour of the day. 
I wanted to know that I gave my best on that day to serve God in every way. You know, sometimes we try to take something in the world that the world's told us is okay. Let me tell you something. Just because government or the world legalizes something doesn't mean it's legal in God's eyes. Amen. 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 So just because you say, well, it's legal. No, it doesn't mean a thing when you come to the Word of God. When you come to the Word of God, what's God's Word say? Amen. Amen. So they were living in an upside-down world. Men don't know if they're men anymore. Women don't know if they're women anymore. Children are confused by the millions. And, and that's in America, folks. That's not happening overseas. That's happening right here in America. Overseas, some of them nations would kill you for that. Now, I'm not advocating that. What I'm saying is don't try to bring that stuff into the church and say it's okay just because the world says it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay for me to come here Sunday morning with a skirt on and a blouse. Huh? No, it ain't okay. Wearing some high heels and red lipstick and preaching to you about Jesus saves. No, I need to get saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, you quiet. I got, I got a lot more to say, but you can't handle it right now. Reset. Amen. But it's a reality. You know it is. Just look at Washington. We got, we got jokers there. Amen. It's crazy. Crazy. And, and nothing happens. They can steal Louis Vuitton suitcases off of the uh, conveyor belts at the airport more than once and yeah. still got a job because they wear a red dress and red lipstick with a bald head and look ridiculous. Preacher, you shouldn't say that. Why not? Somebody needs to. Amen. Hey, man, somebody needs to. That's a problem. When people used to come to church, there'd be a spirit of conviction in the church. Folks would come to the altar and weep. Uh, most churches don't even have an altar anymore. They've been done away with. But the Bible says, weep between the porch and the altar. Tie yourself to the horns of the altar. Yeah. Amen. You know where the fire falls? The fire falls on the sacrifice. And you are a living sacrifice. Amen. That should be holy and acceptable unto God. Stand to your feet. Praise God.